Good chilly morning, guys. It is, uh, let's see, time and temperature. It's November 16th, and it is uh, 9.20 in the morning. And it's probably in the, last time I checked, it was in the upper 50s. So that's cold for me. Um, wind's blowing. Uh, the, and it's going to be a great day, though. However, we're going to be working on our water show. Not extremely thrilled about that, only because it's cold, and um, it's going to be cold, working in water. Uh, this is our catch basin for this year's water show. Um, it's going to be just a small little thing, just a couple little jets, nothing big, nothing nothing fancy. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get this up front, and get it in position and leveled, or well, do it the best we can, because... The main drain is going to go out of the middle, which I'll show you guys here in the upcoming clip. Um, and then we're going to go to the Home Depot and uh, figure out what exactly we need and what kind of jets. The pump I have, haven't used in like three years. I tried to turn it on uh, yesterday and it's completely seized up. So luckily a buddy of mine, Tom, has an extra pool pump that we're going to utilize. And uh, we're going to go and get that first thing this morning. So... Anyway, stay tuned. All right, here's the actual location of the bucket for this year. This is catch, ba catch, catch basin. You see it's pretty much in line with the window and the peak of the house and somewhat in line with the tree. The tree is a little off. We can't do anything about that anyway. All I've done so far is just place it where I want it to and then mark the corner with some paint and the center where the pipe's going to go out because I'm going to have to dig down a little bit and try and to, to bring that pipe out to the back. All right, so um, this catch basin I actually got. This is a um, catch basin from a fish store where they would grow live coral. I have two of them. Um, but, uh, I mean, you could use a small above-ground pool, like a kiddie pool. You can, you can dig a hole and do whatever. Any kind of base of water doesn't matter. I'm going to use this. So um, my initial thought is I'm going to have one jet right in the middle shooting straight up. I'm going to have a ring of smaller jets that goes around it, being able to shoot straight up. And then a third channel that's going to be most likely two jets outside of the tub, one on this corner and one on this corner, that shoot as an arch into the into the tub. So that is the plan. It's going to be three, three separate channels, and I'm going to have uh, maybe even a fourth channel to relieve some pressure if I need. Um, so I can keep the pump running, and uh, even if the water's not running. So that fourth channel will just be kind of a, a relief, so I'm not burning out the pump by running the pump with no valves open. And then the channel, the pump itself is going to be on the channel, so it's five channels total. And then I'm going to have one of the RGB floods that are in that tree, kind of lighting up everything. All right, so what we're going to do here is I've, I've pretty much taken a level and dug down the corners where the feet are. I went ahead and actually before I started, I went ahead and put caps on the two uh, plumbing fixtures that are screwed in the bottom. I thought I was going to be able to use them, but I can't. Um, they're not the right size. So went ahead and capped them off. And we're going to go ahead and fill the tub out here a little bit, and probably not all the way, just to see uh, what we're going to need to make sure the fountains are above water and, and everything. So let's get this thing filled up a little bit. All right, I've got all the plumbing pretty much pre-plumbed and cut. I haven't glued anything yet, but we've got our main valve, two inch, going to a one inch, feeding all three valves. Now I was gonna do four valves, but I just changed it. All right, the first valve is going to be working the six jets in the front, second valve to the main jet in the middle, and the third valve is a relief valve, all right? I'm going to try this first, this extra parts that I had, so I can kind of control how much of a release that I want um, but if not I've got the plumbing to make this just a one inch drop um, but I'm afraid if I just do a one inch drop to release one inch worth of water it's going to uh, it's going to cut down too much so we'll figure it out I'm going to go ahead and glue all this stuff together and then we'll uh, fire it up see what we got we've got here if I haven't already said 
is sprinkler valves. Um, you can find these at any Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. Uh, the little uh, solenoids that uh, control the valve basically when the power is off the valve is closed when the power is on it opens the valve so the less the water through <laughs> these valves run on 18 volts all right so most sprinkler systems they have an 18 volt power supply and then they you set the timer and the timer you know shoots that voltage down to the the uh, this, the, uh, the valve itself to open or close it when needed so what I did when I did this last is I went ahead and I bought some Rainbird 18 volt, um, is it 18 volt? output, 26 volt, sorry, 26 and a half volt. Um, so I bought some power supplies uh, from Home Depot and I hardwired them directly to the, the valve itself. So that was a little pricey. You had to get the, the right voltage uh, to power these, but by putting them in line with the system, having the pump run, and then basically just opening the valves when you want that valve, you know, when that valve you want to open. Um, again, I'm going to have a relief valve because you don't want to run the pump, have the pump running with all the valves shut. All right? If you do that for too long, you'll burn up your pump. So go ahead and get these valves hooked up, and we'll go ahead and get it to do a test. All right, well, we had to change this valve here to a full hat one inch down because uh, having it reduced to the smaller was just too, too much back pressure. So uh, let's see, it should be still good to go. Has all the, the, the jets on at the same time. I do have to make some adjustments to make sure that the, uh, all the nozzles are pointing straight up and it's splashing in back in. Now I'm gonna get some oversplash. So I'm gonna lose some water, but hopefully not a whole lot. I'm gonna get some fishing line to tie this up, but for the most part, you get the one jet that shoots up, probably about six feet with all the jets on. And then the six little ones shoot up maybe about a uh, foot and a half, two feet. So that'll be that'll be the water show. I'm gonna go have the shooting pretty much straight up. Right. Just a little little something. All right, guys. Next big project I'm gonna do is go start wiring up these boxes. These are my four 16 channel lighterama boxes. Um, I've made or built all these boxes. Um, what I mean by that is you can, from Lighterama, buy the the kit where you can buy all the pieces and it comes with everything you need. You just have to solder it together. Way to save some extra money if you feel comfortable doing that. I've had really good luck with all these four boxes with really no issues. Um, I actually think that last year this one has one channel that went out. Um, marked at channel 7 there, so I think channel 7 has a little screwy on this one, but um, box placement this year one box, most likely that box that has the bad channel, it's going to go over here to feed this oak tree two boxes are going to be right underneath behind the bush, over by the window and one box is going to feed the mega tree in the back um, and then obviously you get the uh, RGB floodlight box back here, and the only other controllers I got is the two DMX fed moving heads and the three six channel. I'm sorry, three, yeah, each one is six channel uh, controllers that are actually going to be inside or maybe right outside that window. So I'm going to go ahead and start placing these, get these installed where they go, and then we're going to start hooking them up, run the wires, taking notes on which what is plugged into what so we can uh, uh, move forward. And again, I haven't done any programming yet, but move forward and get those things programmed. All right, here we go. We've got the tree all wired up. That rat's nest down there is all my extension cords using old Christmas lights as extension cords. And I've used the extra excess uh, ropes from the bottom of the ring to hold the ring now in place. So when the wind blows, it doesn't go crazy. And we're all connected. We're all wired up. One box completely wired. I crouched down in this bush back here. I'm trying to make a quick video showing you um, how to hook up your hardware. Now, it might be pretty simple for some people, but basically you just have two RJ11 ports and two RJ, or an RJ45, um, or two Ethernet ports and a phone jack. I don't know what the phone jack is for, nothing that you're going to use it for. So basically you just go in one and out the other, doesn't matter which one. So we're going from our computer into one, out of the other, into the box that's right next to it, 
out of this one. And we're gonna go all the way to the RGB light up front, or the RGB box up front. And then from there, we're gonna go to the back to the tower. And from that tower, we're gonna go all the way to the other side of the house, um, all with Cat5, or, or Ethernet plugs, okay? Um, it doesn't matter what sequence or what order this comes in. This could be box four, this could be box two, that one could be box six, and then whatever, it doesn't matter. These boxes have a UID, which I'll be showing you once I get to my uh, hardware configuration to make sure each box is the one I want, labeled the one I want. You can easily change it, no big deal. Each of these boxes have two power cords for um, for uh, powering the box. One powers one through eight. Next powers nine through sixteen. Um, most cases, because I don't run that much lights, I run both plug both of those into the same uh, extension cord or to the same breaker. It's no big deal. But if you have a power issue, you can actually split half of the box into another breaker, into another extension cord, or something to that nature. So I just wanted to show you. The connection. So now that these are connected, pretty much all I got to do is close it up and make sure it's locked. And when you install these boxes, you'll know, at least the ones I have, they do not have any rubber seal on them. Okay, these boxes are not waterproof, all right, by any means, but I haven't had an issue with them being outside. Now we're under the eave here. As long as you keep them upright and you keep the door shut, you shouldn't have an issue. If you try to lay them down or anything, water is going to get into them and it's going to cause issues. So make sure they're upright. Okay, now after the Lightarama equipment is easy plug and play. Now when it comes to hardwaring the the six channel boards here, it's all on DMX, but it's a hardwired DMX. Alright. So what we've got here, and I know it's upside down, we've got a D plus, a D minus, and a G. So this is the positive, the negative, and the ground. If you cut open an XLR cable, what I'm doing uh, you have three basic cables. You got your ground, you got your red, which is your positive, and your blue, which is your negative. So basically what we're gonna do is just hardwire this into here, okay? So we have basically a three pin XLR. I cut, it's gonna be going in. All these are already, you know, bridged together. And then from here, we hit the other side. And then it's going up to my moving heads up, up uh, on the roof. Now I've set these dip switches. Now you can go online to find the dip switch cal uh, calculator. All right. So this one is going to be set to channels uh, this, to start. You to set your start channel. Um, this board right here is starting on channel 27. So the dip switch is for 27. Is going to be. Uh, one and two on, three off, four, five on, and then six channels from there, which is 33. The zip switch settings for that is one on, three, four, five is off, and six is on, everything else is off. And then the last one would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 33, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is channel 39, starting at 39. And the channel for 39 is going to be 1, 2, and 3 on, 4, 5 off, 6 on. All right. And that will designate these boards to control channel 27, 28, 29, 33, 1 through 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 8, 39, 44, 1, 42, 43, 44. All right. So when I program those channels, they will do what they're supposed to do. So I'm going to get all this wired up. I'm going to get it hooked up and hopefully uh, get everything at least tested and make sure it's working. Okay, now that I've got everything hooked up, I've got to open up the Lightarama Hardware Manager. And uh, once we get this opened up, we're going to just conf... Oh, hopefully here it'll open in a second. Once you get it open up here, basically going to... Let's see what we can do. We're going to do a quick auto configuration. And it's going to scan to see what devices it finds. After we did our auto configure, we found that our um, adapter, little contra, uh, is, is on, on COM port 5. So we're going to hit refresh here. And remember, we want all the boxes to be plugged in and hooked up to our network, and it's going to find what we, hopefully we'll find five boxes. After we did the, the uh, configuration, the, the unit configuration, we were able to find all five units. I actually only found three the first time, but two of the boxes weren't plugged. 
So double check, make sure all the boxes are plugged in. So we got units one, two, three, and four, and then unit 41 is actually my CMB24D. That's my RGB uh, controller. I've relabeled that box as many times, uh, every time, but every time it loses power, um, it always comes back as unit 41. So I'm just gonna keep it 41 in programming. But if for the reason I wanted to change that, I can go here, select the old unit ID number, boom and then select the new ID number. Now, there should be really no reason you would want to have two boxes with the same unit ID, but if you did, they would basically mirror each other. Everything that was going on channel one on unit ID one, if you had two boxes with the same unit ID, they would be basically duplicate boxes. So whatever one would do, the other one would do. To rename a duplicate box, you wanna make sure to disconnect or unplugged, unplug one of them then go to rename it and then plug it back and plug all of them back in and then search again and you'll find that uh, uh, the, the unit back on the list. So now that we got all five, we can go in here and start actually testing and uh, doing some configuration. So I'm going to test, I'm going to run through the sequence here and test to see what we got. All right, what I'm doing now, which would be the next step of my DM, then my, my process is uh, basically just figuring out uh, the configuration of the DMX intensities and where the lights will point. So when I start doing my programming, I have a good idea of what I'm doing. Now I'll be totally honest right now. It's late in the, late in the evening. Uh, it's about 1030 and uh, I'm having a hard time with my arches. For some reason they're not coming on. Um, I know they're not programmed on right now, but I can't seem to get them on, but I do got my DMXs on. Um, and what I'm basically doing is I've labeled my channels, channel one, and channel 14, which would be my left and my right, are uh, what I am labeling as my balance. As you can see, it's going from zero to 100%. Um, I also have my uh, up and down, or U and D, uh, set at a 18% uh, DMX intensity. And what I'm trying to do is trying to, and I'm pulling my head out the window here, is trying to see exactly what is straight up and down and 18 is very close all right so when i find exactly what's straight up and down i'm going to my chart here and i'm going to say up and down pointing straight down is going to be in intensity 18 pointing straight out is going to be whatever intensity straight up is going to be whatever and i'm going to kind of make a graph so when i start programming if i want it to shoot up or down i'll have a good idea balance is obviously going to be looking straight out which way the angle is going to be. All right, so um, this is just what I do. I want to have this little gear set up, um, and then I'll also uh, have some uh, pinpoints. So I might have a pinpoint to the fountain, I might have a pinpoint to the, the glitter ball, and things like that, so I'll know. So that's what I'm doing right now. And though it's getting late, I'm going to pretty much end the video here. Um, I've got the DMX, I got the pinpoint for the DMX for the, 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 the glitter ball, which actually looks really cool. I've got all four lights on, which are red, white, green, and blue. Um, the green and blue are obviously shining in the house, where the red and white are actually shining out here. So you can see the lights going crazy out here, so. I am going to uh, no, I think I'm gonna just keep it, keep it at that. So appreciate you guys um, watching. I've got a lot accomplished today, so I've got a lot of work to do. I will be out here every night this week, or right, well, it's it's Friday right now, but we'll be out Saturday, Sunday night. I got to work both Saturday and Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. I've got the days off. Planning on spending most of those days programming. So appreciate you watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to them. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram.